Hello, Huskies. I'm MJ DeVivo, and welcome back to UCTV News. And I'm John Henry Burke, and here is your Yukon News for October 2023. We'll start things off with our student spotlight. UConn sophomore Chapal Bafsar spent four weeks this summer in England as part of the prestigious Fulbright UK Summer Institute. He studied through an interdisciplinary program emphasizing climate change, sustainability, and civic responsibility for the future of the planet. The U.S.-U.K. Fulbright Commission works to develop leaders through education, exchange between the U.S. and U.K., and supports up to 60 undergraduate students from the United States. Bafsar's project was an economic analysis of waste-to-energy solutions in Algeria and finished the final paper upon his return home. Homecoming week kicked off on Sunday with the Homecoming Parade and Carnival. Fitting, as this year's theme is Carnival of Champions. The annual lip sync battle will be this Thursday at 7 o'clock in Gamble Pavilion, and the homecoming football game is on Saturday at 3.30 in Rentschler Stadium. There will also be a Fan Fest Friday, where students will have an opportunity to enjoy some carnival-themed foods at noon on Fairfield Way. UConn Hartford undergraduate student government's fall 2023 general election is underway. There are six seats up for election, five of them being Senate seats and one being the vice president position. And to run, you have to submit the intent to run form by noon on Thursday, which you can find online. To run, you are required to be a full-time Hartford undergraduate fee-paying student and have a minimum GPA of 2.5 before and during your elected term. Speaking of elections, election day is almost here, so make sure you are registered to vote. The Asian American Cultural Center is hosting a meeting on Thursday in the Student Union Room 428 from 5 to 6.30 and will be sharing resources and information on registering to vote, requesting an absentee ballot, and they will also be providing snacks. The 30th annual Hartford Marathon took place this weekend at the capital city. This saw over 8,000 runners participate and even more show up to spectate. UConn's very own Eco Huskies were on site running various compost stations and educating attendees about waste diversion. Awesome work, everyone. Now, over to some international news. Iran warned Israel of escalation if it failed to end aggressions against Palestinians with its foreign minister saying other parties in the region were ready to act, the semi-official Fars news agency reported on Sunday. Israel has long accused Iran's clerical rulers of stoking violence by supplying arms to Hamas. Backing the Palestinian cause has been a pillar of the Islamic Republic since the 1979 revolution. President Joe Biden on Wednesday pledged his support for Israel during his trip to Tel Aviv and said that a terrorist group in Gaza was apparently responsible for the deadly blast at a Christian-run hospital in Gaza City that is estimated to have killed hundreds. Biden also announced $100 million in new U.S. funding for humanitarian aid in both the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. Biden stressed his support for Israel amid its ongoing war with Hamas and also acknowledged that Palestinian people are suffering greatly and that he mourns the loss of innocent Palestinian lives. Connecticut Representative John B. Larson announced he joined 390 of his House colleagues to introduce a bipartisan resolution standing with Israel after Hamas launched terrorist attacks against them. In other news, Stockholm is introducing a petrol and diesel car ban in an attempt to slash emissions. The Swedish capital city is planning this ban against traditional cars for next year and will be the first major European city to do so. Instead of polluting cars, top city officials envision a city with outdoor seating and plenty of space for walking and cycling. Once the ban comes into effect in 2024, only electric vehicles and low emission gas vehicles will be allowed to drive in the area. In Washington, House Republicans once again voted to reject the nomination of Republican Representative Jim Jordan of Ohio to be the next Speaker of the House. 
Jordan lost a second vote in as many days as opposition to his nomination grew from 20 GOP defections to 22. It is unclear how Republicans will proceed as the House remains unable to conduct any business without an elected speaker. Federal Judge Tanya Chutkin has barred Donald Trump from criticizing prosecutors, the court, and possible witnesses ahead of his trial on election subversion charges. It follows recent remarks in which the former president slammed prosecutors as a, quote, team of thugs and attacked one witness in the case as a gutless pig. Judge Chutkin said that a limited gag order against Mr. Trump was necessary to prevent a pre-trial smear campaign. Everyone loves the Olympics, and the 2024 Paris Games are right around the corner. But did you know the following games in 2028 will be hosted by the United States? That's right, the 2028 Games will take place in LA, and planning is already underway. In fact, it's been recently announced that five new sports are being added to the Games for 2028. Flag football, squash, cricket, lacrosse, and baseball. Baseball was in the last Olympic Games, but isn't scheduled for Paris 2024. Lacrosse hasn't been a part of the game since 1948, and cricket hasn't been in it since 1900. Flag football and squash will be played at the Olympics for the first time ever. In Yukon sports news, last Friday, the Yukon men's basketball team received their championship rings for winning last year's NCAA March Madness Tournament. The rings were made of white gold and adorned with sparkling gems surrounding the word Yukon over the national championship trophy. The team's 31-8 final record and the player's name are on one side with the Final Four logo in front of the eyes of a Husky on the other side. The 2023 NCAA championship banner will be unveiled at Gamble Pavilion on November 6 before the team plays their first game of the season. The Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame and the Women's Basketball Coaches Association on Monday announced that UConn senior guard Nika Mule was one of the 20 players selected to the watch list for the 2024 Nancy Lieberman Award. The award recognizes the top point card in women's NCAA Division I college basketball. Mule was a finalist for the 2023 Nancy Lieberman Award, and she set the UConn single-season assist record last season with 284 assists, passing Sue Bird's previous record of 231 assists. Five Huskies have won the Lieberman Award a total of nine times, Sue Bird, Diana Taurasi, Renee Montgomery, Mariah Jefferson, and Paige Buckers. Um, now over to some UConn events that are upcoming. Um, Yukon Archery Club is hosting a Halloween shootout at the Holloway Armory on October 28th from 3 to 5. There's no prior experience necessary. The cost is going to be $10, but be, be sure to bring your student ID. Lambda Kappa Sigma is hosting a 5K on Thursday, October 19th at 4.45 for Project Hope. Project Hope is a nonprofit organization that provides healthcare services to places in need during disasters and health crises. Project Hope has responded to every major disaster since the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami, including the Ukraine crisis, the 2021 Haiti earthquake, Hurricane Dorian in the Bahamas, and the COVID-19 pandemic. They also partner with local government agencies and international nonprofits to develop long-term solutions to complex health challenges. Check-in will take place in the Pharmacy Biology Building lobby. They will be providing free Gansett wraps and giveaway prizes. The event is open to anybody, and it is $10 to register for a UConn student. The Haunted Heap, hosted by the Office of Sustainability, will take place on Wednesday, October 25th from 7 to 930 at the Hillside Environmental Education Park. The trail is about one mile long and will be filled with terrifying frights. Do you have what it takes to conquer the trail? Well, Huskies, that's it for October 2023. I'm MJ DeVivo. And I'm John Henry Burke. Thanks for watching UCTV News today. Do me a favor, go have yourself a spooktacular Halloween and a great rest of your month.